the student organization advisor relationship. So working with student groups is not rocket science, but it does require intent, and it definitely works best when the communication lines are open very wide both ways. So we talked in an earlier chapter about really self-reflecting on why you chose to advise a student group at all. Uh, but the other thing you want to think about is how your behavior will interact with the student group and what's best for their needs as they develop as student leaders, as well as how the organization develops as a whole. So one of the things that will really help you is getting to know the leadership team of your student organization very well so that you can have a good conversation about your expectations and theirs. And you can make sure that if something goes awry or if you're not on the same page, you're able to feel comfortable having a conversation with them about how to make things better or um, other things that they could do better to enhance the relationship. In your advisor manual on pages 11 and 12, there are a list of advisor roles. And so you should review this on your own time to make sure that you're aware of some different roles that you could fill with the student organization. So there are three that we really focus on in student life, and we see most typically that student groups here um, need from their advisor. So the first one is a maintenance or custodial function. The second is a group growth function. And the third is program content functions. Within each of these broad areas, the group advisor should be prepared to perform the duties associated with each function, depending on the development of the group. So for the maintenance or custodial functions, uh, advisory activities serve to maintain the existence of the student organization and to keep it out of difficulty and includes providing uh, the organization with the history of so what has happened in the past um, with the group, so keeping records, that sort of thing. Uh, provide advice when requested arbitrating intergroup disputes so really that depends on the group and that's a conversation you should have with your group earlier than when the conflict arises just for best practice and also preventing situations that may occur in poor public relations situations so if the group hasn't advertised effectively for an event and you feel that it's a waste of resources for them to continue um, the person or an advisor who's functioning in a custodial role would probably step in to say okay hey let's really think about do we still want to do this program is it in our best interest that sort of thing the group growth functions really focus on helping the organization develop as a whole and making sure that the leadership team is where it needs to be in order to function efficiently. So as the group growth function focusing advisor, you're not really focusing on the content of the programs or events. You're really more focusing on the process associated with uh, working on those programs. So you will help teach techniques and responsibilities of the members. So really helping um, them go through the Constitution and their bylaws and see what each member's responsibility is and helping them set goals so they can do that to the best of their ability. You'll also teach them roles of effective group function, so delegating, working together, effective communication, those sort of things. So things that we as faculty and staff have a lot of experience with in uh, both our professional lives as well as our personal lives as we've gone through college and graduate school and that sort of thing. And our students really are sponges for this information. Some of these things they think um, they have a theory on how it'll work, but once they really get into the nitty gritty of planning an event and everyone's not cooperating or they're doing all the work themselves, it's really helpful to have an advisor who understands the group growth functions to help them make the most of their experience and really come out of even the worst program or event if it doesn't go well with a learning opportunity. The program content function of an advisor is really to focus on what the content specifically of the programs and activities of the group entail. And so generally with a more developed student group, this is something that an advisor can look forward to doing. Um, so especially if you're working with a group that focuses on your professional content area or something that you're very passionate about, this will be a particularly exciting aspect of work for an advisor to work with a student group on. So some of the things that uh, an advisor who's focusing on content would take care of is encouraging the group to consider other educational values of their programming. So uh, if Black History Month is coming up, for example, and you advise um, a multicultural student group, you might encourage them to work on programming for that month in a different way than they have in the past. So maybe they've always done a panel discussion, um, and you tell them that maybe they should consider branching out and bringing other groups on board and doing a potluck dinner or doing an educational campaign on campus about little-known people in black history. So those are 
are just some examples of the ways that a program content focusing advisor would um, work with the student group. Um, some other things would be to really challenge the students to come up with their own learning outcomes for their programs. So, you know, with a new group, they're not really focusing on what they're learning from the activity. They're more focused on, okay, we have to do three programs per semester. Let's get that out of the way and let people know who we are on campus. But as the group develops further, it's really important to help them make meaning um, of their experiences outside the classroom. And so as a faculty member or a staff member who works on campus, it's really helpful that you can bring in other events you know that are going on on campus or other initiatives on campus and help the students integrate that into how they decide which kinds of programs they're going to do on campus. So on page 12 of your organization advisor manual, there is a list of different roles that the advisor can play. So similar to what we discussed um, in the different functions of the advisor, there are also different roles. So the first one is mentor. There's also supervisor, teacher, leader, and follower. So take a moment to go through your advisor manual and really examine what ways, in what ways you could fill those roles for your student group. So one experience I've had with my organization, I work with the Widener Activities Council, and after three years of working with them, they're very independent. And so when I first started working with them, there were a lot of times that I really felt like I was the co-president as opposed to just the advisor, because I really needed to help them facilitate getting work done on time, efficiently, effectively, um, and really doing things in the wisest uh, manner. Now, after three years, they're telling me what they need me to do. Um, and that's a really great transition because I'm focusing on what learning experiences they're going to have as students through their experience with the Widener Activities Council, not what do I need to do as their advisor so that I'm having a good time. So it's important that you know I'm enjoying myself and I like what I'm doing with the students, but my role has shifted from um, being a supervisor to sometimes having to be a follower for them because that's what the group needs right now. They don't need me to take over their general meeting or their executive team meeting because they already know how to plan a meeting. They do their own agendas, they make their own minutes, they set up their own volunteer lists. All I have to do is show up, buy them things on occasion with their budget, as you will probably do too, um, and check in with them and make sure that they're doing okay both as members of the group um, and in class because really they're here to go to school. So we need to make sure that you know we take care of them inside and outside the classroom. And that's something that an advisor should do well.